Hi, I'm Etienne Barnard from Northwest University in South Africa, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about our research program. So the particular project I want to tell you about has the catchy title of Using Machine Learning to Measure Student Learning, and I'm hoping that by the end of my little talk you'll have some more idea of what this is all about. This work is being done as part of the HP Catalyst initiative, and we're very fortunate to be part of the Measuring Learning Consortium within that initiative. And all the folks in Measuring Learning are trying to figure out what measurements we can make and how we can make them to ensure that we support productive and creative learning, both by the individual and within groups. So to tell you about this research, I'm going to cover three topics. The first being our learning environment here at Northwest University, and then why it is so important to understand how students learn in such an environment and what role technology can play in that. And then finally, I'll focus on machine learning as a particular way to enhance the role of technology in this learning process. So our university is in many ways a microcosm of what's happening in South Africa right now. Many of you may be aware of the fact that South Africa is actually a fairly recent democracy, um, having only made the democratic change in 1994. And as a consequence, many things are changing in our country. We now have a highly diverse student population, where previously it was a much, much less diverse. And many of our current students are first-generation students. Their parents and grandparents never had the opportunity to participate in higher education. And so these students, of course, and bring a whole lot of new energy and new talent to the university. Furthermore, we are growing very rapidly, having more than doubled our student population within the past two years. And like most universities, we have severely limited resources, and so we can't afford to make extensive experiments as part of this process of figuring out how to serve these students well. Fortunately, we're not alone in trying to address problems of this nature. And many people have understood that learning technology can play a significant role in addressing such problems. For one thing, technology gives learners the ability to control their own learning processes and therefore really supports the type of individual learning that is crucial in a diverse environment such as ours. In addition, with technology, it's possible to give rap rapid feedback both to students and to lecturers about what's happening in the class thereby further supporting the type of flexibility that I think is really crucial. For example, one can use web-based learning management systems to provide students with learning materials that are a lot more flexible and, and support self-directed learning. And one can use things like work benches and domain-specific simulations to give students the opportunity to explore and to learn at their own rate and in their own way. But of course, we should not be naive about what can be achieved with learning technology. I think we're all aware of apparently well-planned and certainly expensive technological interventions that were tried in various educational settings, which did not provide any improvement and in some cases even were bad for the students. And as a matter of fact, many of my colleagues still believe that nothing invented after 1900 has really contributed to the educational process, just because so many of these failures have been so dramatic. And uh, therefore, if we really are going to benefit from using technology, we need to understand its benefits and shortcomings a lot better than is currently the case, especially for the type of non-mainstream students who, as I say, are such an important part of our student population. To come to grips with these challenges, we intend to use computers not only as tools that the students can use in the learning process, but also as tools to analyze what's happening during the learning process. And in particular, we are trying to use a group of computer algorithms that are known as machine learning algorithms to understand what really is happening in detail during the learning process. Now, I realize many of you may not be that familiar with machine learning. So let me just give you a flavor by saying that Machine learning is a set of computer algorithms and programs that are used for tasks such as computer vision or speech recognition or even credit risk scoring. It's a set of algorithms that can be used to understand patterns that occur within data. 
and the two pictures on the screen here show two types of patterns that are very commonly useful within machine learning. The left hand one being clustering, where one is looking for patterns in data that are in some way similar to one another. And the right hand picture signifies classification, where one's trying to distinguish between objects which in one way or another fall into different classes. So now let's put these two things together. On the one hand, we have students with learning behaviors that we're trying to understand and trying to know how we can use technology to support those learning behaviors. On the other hand, we have these machine learning algorithms that are good at figuring out patterns that occur within data. And our approach in this project is to try and put these two together by basically the three steps that are outlined here. On the one hand, we're going to start out by measuring student behaviors at a fairly fine grain. So we're going to see how they use our technological tools. For example, how much time they spend on online quizzes, when they go to the web to assess various learning information, and in detail just how they are using these technology tools that we are making available to them. On the other hand, we're also going to keep track of what their learning outcomes are, how they perform in various classes, how they do in project work, and to what extent they collaborate with one another. And finally, we're going to use these machine learning algorithms to try and relate these two groups of measurements to one another. In, in date detail, we're going to look at how these learning activities of these contribute to their learning outcomes, how these depend on things like the particular characteristics of the students, their cultural and, and learning backgrounds, and so forth, to really try and understand how it is that certain types of technological interventions assist particular groups of students. Of course, so that we can pay more attention to those things that are useful and not spend time on things that really don't contribute to positive learning outcomes. So we're coming towards the end of the first year of our work on this project. And I'm happy to say that we've made some progress. Um, in particular, we've seen that it really is possible to design course materials in which we can measure to a fairly great detail the specific learning activities that the students are participating in. And um, we've gone about um, collecting a whole lot of relevant information from the students who are, who are participating in these classes. And right now, what we are doing is we're measuring how the students are learning. We're seeing, for example, how they're using the simulations. And we're um, in the labs conducting questionnaires to figure out what it is that they like and don't like about the technology. And then, of course, we're also making these objective measurements of how they're performing in projects and in tests and so forth. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, we'll have sufficiently um, diverse measurements to start using our machine learning algorithms on these data. And so I'm hoping that by the end of this calendar year, we'll have initial results on the types of interventions that, that affect our different students in different ways. So I'd like to end by saying that we really are excited about what's happening in this project. I think without something like this intervention, it really would not have been possible for us to scale up the type of learning that we're trying to provide for our students at this university. And uh, by building on the insights that we're getting from, from this research project, we really believe that we can invent new and creative ways to address the very specific problems that occur uh, for students on our cam campus. And in the process, we think we're going to learn some things about how to use technology effectively that will hopefully also be useful to people elsewhere, um, specifically in developing world environments such as ours, where student diversity and different student backgrounds is always a major factor in the learning process. But perhaps also even in the developed world, where learning technology continues to be a challenge and, and appropriate use of such technology is certainly not a settled matter by now. Finally, as a theoretician, I'm happy to, happy to say that already some of these experiments have given us novel insights into these machine learning tools that we've developed. And I'm hoping that this will really be a two-way street that we'll keep developing more sophisticated algorithms and that those algorithms will really contribute to the learning process. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that, uh, that we'll have further conversations on these exciting topics in time to come.